This is the lineup the Watford crowd look to to maintain an impressive home record. The one change from last week is Paul Franklin in place of the injured Steve Terry. And Graham Taylor has the experience Jan Lohman on the substitutes bench. It seems strange to me to look at a Liverpool team without Phil Neal and Alan Kennedy, but they've moved on. And Steve Nicholl and Ronnie Whelan normally occupy the fullback positions these days. And Kenny Dalgleish, the manager, finds no place for Dalgleish, the player. So, all set for a Sunday afternoon at play. The venue, I suppose, couldn't be more fitting. Vicarage Road. And the referee in charge is Martin Bodnam of Brighton. And the two linesmen, Graham Crafter of Maidstone and David Keane of Reading. Liverpool in their chain strip, which is all white. And Hansen denying Grobbel an early feel of the ball. A bit interesting contrast in styles between the two sides. Steve Nicholl. And here's the first slightly tentative piece of play for Paul Franklin. Only his second game of the season. He was injured in the sixth round of the cup the year that uh, Watford reached the final and has played just one game since he needed a cartilage operation in between and that of course cost him a medal at Wembley. Hansen. Copen coming for it. Mulby again the back player. Too happy with Steve Nichol. This time Bobby's forward. Corbett out by Lawrenson. Corbett just to limit his forays forward, Brian Talbot. And if he gets caught up, there can suddenly be a hole behind him. Throw coming up from Will Prostra. Well, longish. Johnston. A bit all over the place. His jacket, and that's a good try! And it's a goal. Trouble I was actually going the other way. Kenny Jacket, the scorer of Watford's 50th goal of the season, and it came from that extraordinary error from the Liverpool team. You watch Grobola, he's going to his left, has to try and recover, and couldn't do so. The ball swerving in and giving Watford the lead. The match has been on for 19 minutes, and the match very much needed the goal. Good play by Mark Lawrenson. Khan trying to bring a little tidiness around. I must say, I would be very interested to know what Kenny Dalglish's theories are on playing Mulby at the back. It's always been thought in football that you could knock the ball over the head of Messrs. Lawrenson and Hansen, but few have succeeded in doing so because they're both so quick in recovery. And Mulby's so often playing as what the Italians would call a libero, a sweeper, a spare man at the back, calling what you like. McDonald's. Teasing pass because it drew the defender. The ball was out. The linesman on the far side is Mr. Keane of Reading. David Keane. Here's Rush, and again Rush. Oh, one is tempted to say that that's the sort of thing that when he was scoring consistently would have gone in for him. He had two chances here. Second one was a bit of a swing. 
just uh, one goal in the last 10 games in rush made the opportunity stretch for it well didn't really set himself didn't give himself as much time as in fact he had and we've had half an hour Barnes Sterling they're queuing up Barnes good play by Mulby determined challenge by Mulby and it denied Barnes who looked with half a thought <laughs> and Grobola as ever calming things down in the walls but unconcerned Barnes certainly got away here after Grobola got a fist look at this determination by Mulby Got the ball, played the ball all the time, no doubt about that in my mind. And a bit of a push by Mulby. Well, it's certainly not a role that he will play for Denmark in the World Cup. And at the back, we'll go to Morton Olsen. Barnes, West forward, jacket forward, good header by Lawrenson. McMahon, what was he trying to do? Handball by uh, West anyway. But what was McMahon trying to do? It's a little difficult to suggest that the handball by West was deliberate because the ball was smashed at him by an opponent playing it the wrong way. Steve McMahon was sure what he intended. It was obviously intended as a back pass, but an extraordinary one in that situation, but clearly handball. Mulby. Rush. A lot of running for Johnston. Hasn't really been served at all, Craig Johnston. Again, Mulby caught in possession. It's three against two. It's a good shot. Callahan. Oh no! And Liverpool enormously lucky. Barnes opting for the shot, having robbed Mulby. Although Watford outnumbered the defence by three to two. And Callahan. Well, one can only say a rush of blood to the head because a side foot would have done it. Although some credit is due to Grobola, who got his hands down at the point of impact, although not actually making contact with the ball. Rush has gone on. Finds himself one against one. Craig Johnston. Walsh. Yes. And that all came from the error in midfield. Suddenly, Rush found himself, I think for the first time in the match, one against one. He was able to hold the ball up for Johnston coming inside. Watch for the pace of uh, Walsh going forward and a very, very good finish. And Liverpool, who've looked nothing like their usual selves, draw level in the last minute of the half. And really that came from the total nonsense in midfield when one Watford player played the ball against the other. Two players involved, Kenny Jackett and Colin West. Steve Nichol, same angle for Callahan.
Johnston. Well, the total balance of play was all in Watford's favour. But they come off at half-time with the score at one goal each. Kenny Jacket, number 10, having put them into the lead in the 19th minute and maintained Watford's record of scoring in every home game this season. But then, on the stroke of half-time, a mistake involving Jacket and West in midfield, allowing Liverpool to build their first attack of any note, from which Paul Walsh scored to make it one all at half-time. And among our viewers, I'm sure particularly disappointed at the way Watford gave the lead away, will be Luther Blissett. And a nice message for you there, Luther. Get well soon. For those of you who don't know, he's in hospital having had a knee operation, which seems likely to keep him out of football for the rest of the season. So that's the position as we start the second half. 1-1. And that was the result in this fixture last season. Since Watford came back to the first division, each side in this meeting has had a victory with one match draw. There's Walsh. And Mulby at least starting the half in front of the back four rather than behind it where he spent so much of the first half. Could be a little nippy. Franklin's back pass. Simon Kerritton, who came here in September 1984, conceded five goals in his debut against Everton. And like Grobola before him, he's having trouble clearing the ball against the wind. Walsh, one way and then the other. He's made a little bit of room. Mulby. Liverpool certainly attempting to seize the initiative. Didn't really change the formation there. Just making better use of the ball and getting players forward at better moments invitation then to go inside Walsh that's a nice try he's one of those players trying to remind uh, the England manager that he's still around on the fringe of selection Walsh he's already demonstrated why the manager can't get in the side Rush. That's more the focal point, Rush, now. It's another good try. And it's worth quite a lot. And that's the second save that Coton's had to make. And this was the one a few seconds earlier from Paul Walsh. Paul Walsh seems to me to be wandering more and playing more off him. And using his tight control and pace to good advantage. between Nickel and Sterling. The free kick, it might be said, goes the British way. Callahan to take it. Four, just forward of the penalty spot. Rather disappointing, the set pieces from Watford. I'm surprised they don't offer themselves more width. They were all crowded around the penalty spot. Nobody coming in from the far side at all. Whelan, Rush, took it well. It's side netting. In the corner. A good quick break again. And comfortably taken by Rush. Coaten covering the near post. And covers the corner just as well. Whether the referee 
raises his arm, whether he saw that as obstruction or as a push. At the moment, the arm is staying down, and I suspect that that means he saw it as the push. So it is direct. If Mulvey wants to have a crack, or Ronnie Whelan. Five in the box for Liverpool on the near side as we look. Mulvey does have a crack. And a good one to it. An arch at the back from Coton, turning it over. Looks spectacular, but the sort of save that a goalkeeper feels that uh, he should be expected to make. Certainly a goalkeeper of Coton's quality. Out by West, only to Whelan. totally miscued that'll be made real contact on the boot and we pass the hour point of the match that's what a contrast between the first 45 minutes and the last quarter of an hour Torbett, here's Walsh, rush, that's a fine save, that is a really very good save by Tony Coton. Well in fact I wanted a shot of this man to show really what I thought of his game today, this was the best save I think so far, we'll look at it again just in a moment but uh, really magnificent. McMahon. Yes and a moment now really to say that he's worth every penny they've paid for him. And Bobby Robson, who must be blessed with uh, you know, an abundance of good goalkeepers now. I mean, we even got one working for us today that wouldn't disgrace England in Mexico. And uh, Coton, indeed, has impressed me as an outstanding goalkeeper in everything he's done. And uh, really, that is, that is something under these circumstances. He's kept Watford in the game. Mulvey. Straight through Talbot. To rush, Coton off his line rightly, surely. Johnston, Walsh. Well, Johnston took his time and looked for Walsh. And in the end, it's a corner of the shot coming from McMahon. It's a sort of occasion when a player might have had a, a flash at the ball, but Craig Johnston made up his mind whether he was going to try and lob the goalkeeper or find Walsh, he opted for the latter but Walsh got crowded up and Mulvey, would you believe, in the opposition six-yard area what a change and he was unmarked, really, if the ball had been dropped a bit shorter Callahan. there's a gap down the middle, Barnes left side well, it's easy to play the game from up here, but it should have been Barnes' left side. Lawrence. And Watford about to bring on the Dutchman. It's a change because of the injury that we saw a few moments ago, Talbot feeling his thigh, or the back of the thigh. Jan Lerman. And ball, but the, again the referee plays the advantage. Good correction by Gibbs, he had to hold it because two players were offside. Barnes was aware of it, West was not. And we're into the last quarter of an hour. Nickel. Walsh always looks capable of setting something up for Liverpool. Craig Johnston's cross. Rush! Yes! Johnston's cross. Walsh, who first started it? 
and look at this for a piece of finishing before this season or before recent games quite typical Watford one Liverpool two Rush again once more nobody putting the middle at the moment Johnston well we wondered about the finishing of Ian Rush one goal in the last ten games but he's looked eager in the second half and here showed just what he can do Callahan being urged on by the home crowd and by the others in the championship race. This is John Barnes. And he was unable to make the most of a useful looking ball. Barnes again. Sterling held it up well. Corner. Walsh comes back into the area to make an extra marker. Just rush, a lonely figure in the centre circle. McLennan has left him to come and act as an attacker. Franklin stays back. Oh, easy. Certainly disappointing feature of Watford's game has been the quality of their set pieces, free kicks and corners. Nearly all of them, if not all of them, taken by Callahan. I don't think he's had one that could in any way be described as good. Oh, it's a bit short, and here's Walsh. No doubt now. Well, fitting, really, that it should be Paul Walsh because he's done most surely to turn this game Liverpool's way. And the disappointing back pass from Paul Franklin. And no doubt now where the three points are going with Liverpool's third goal. Coat really had no chance. As well to parry initially. Walsh just following through to watch it over the line. to 16 goals this season Rush to 14 between them they have pulled Liverpool's story completely around Sterling and Grobel are having to backtrack and we have another goal Jan Lohmann I think Grobel are a little let down by his defenders. Although he was well out looking for the back pass, Nickel made a bit of a nonsense. And Lohman had no difficulty. one ricochet in midfield and what a change there was that followed and one can only say as Graham Taylor walks off obviously disappointed but one can understand why Kenny Dalglish decides not to pick himself two goals for Walsh and one for Ian Rush <laughs> 